Hi! Welcome to this part of my review featuring Demon Gate, Beyond the Sea of Falling Skies. If you haven't seen the other parts of my review featuring this Exotic Lands expansion, please check out the playlist in the description below. This time we are going to talk about the character species, starting with the Kitsune. Now there is a mistake here, unless they are handling some sort of different pronunciation specific to the setting, Kitsune is not pronounced Kitsune, it's not ne, it's ne. I've seen this error in other US RPG products, for example, Tales from the Yawning Portal, the Shrine of Tamoachan, they constantly make that mistake. So it's important to keep in mind those pronunciations, because otherwise you wouldn't be using the cultural flavor properly. For example, it's not Montezuma, it's Moctezuma. For the same reason why we don't say Abraham Lincoln, it's Moctezuma. Correct pronunciation. Abraham Lincoln, Moctezuma. The Kitsune have the subspecies of half kin or half kit. Their average height is between four and a half to five and a half feet. They are somewhat fast on their feet. They can live up to 300 years and they have plenty of racial abilities and characteristics. For example, they have fey magic. Even mundane fey possess some magic within. Half kin do not use mana. You also have shapeshifter, but this shapeshifting capability cannot be used by half kitsune. You also have claw attacks. You are great at jumping and leaping, but you have a weakness towards silver. Luckily, half kitsune do not suffer this weakness. The fox skin are said to be one of the fabled fey species trapped in this world during the shattering, when the moon fell from the sky in the 10th era. Others say the kitsune have lived among the world for thousands of years. They are often mistaken for yokai, thought to be spirits that possess others due to their powers to shift. Another old name for them is Hulijing, a name from the old tongue. Kitsune primarily dwell in the far northern region of Mianwu, in an area known as the Tagawa province. They are not widely known in western Goth. They stay in these lands for security. In the past few hundred years, they were nearly wiped out by an invasion from Kalesh and a follow-up war from the city of Honenoshi. Kitsune in general are quite dexterous, intelligent and charismatic, but they are not very sturdy. Next we have the Naga, the serpent kin. They have the subspecies of Nagiri, Bausiri and Vishnag. Their average height is between 5 to 8 feet. They are not very fast on land, but they are very quick in water. They live up to 400 years, and they are quite sturdy, they are strong and of a hardy constitution. However, depending on the subspecies, they could suffer some penalties to, for example, intelligence or charisma. Some of their abilities and characteristics include a venomous bite, and depending on their variant subspecies, they could have resistance to cold, they could be quite stealthy, they can even go on a combat frenzy. The Naga are a proud species of beings that were thought of as immortals by the tribes of Kalesh. You have the three primary species. The Vishnag are quite bestial and animal, they are not a player character species. They have a massive snake-like body, with the head of a reptilian with many quills or horns protruding from it. The Bausiri possess a very anthropomorphic snake-like reptilian form. They have the head of a beast, the torso of a humanoid, with limbs that can wield weapons, yet the torso is covered in scales and tough armor. The Nagini is another name for what is called the Noble. This subspecies looks very human from the waist upward, yet the lower body is a serpent. The Nobles also have the unique ability to shapeshift into their humanoid form. The Naga lore has always been veiled by mysticism and oddly connected to Terran lore. Some dwell in underwater cities, while others live in huts suspended in the trees. Next we have the Oni, with a subspecies of the Ogre Magi. Their height is between 8 to 9 feet, they deal a lot of unarmed damage. However, they are quite slow. Luckily, they live between 200 to 300 years. 
They are very strong. They have great constitution, but they are not very dexterous nor charismatic. Some of their abilities include love, throwing large objects. If you want to attack your enemies with huge boulders, logs, etc., this is the ability for you. They can also carry a lot of stuff. They have a blood curse. They can bite, similar to a vampire. They can recover hit points. They are weak towards elemental damage. As an Oni, you can smell flesh. You can detect mortal flesh quite easily. And as an Ogre Magi, you can use your astral eye to look into the subtle realms. The Oni are a species of ogre-like beasts. They are often hunched near the back, possessing tusks and pointed ears on their goblinoid faces. They are a mixture of ogre and troll blood, as well as demonic parts, vile and crafted by Val's minions when he established his brood covens. The most common Oni are the Gaelis, for they hail from the island of Gael, south of Mien Wu. The northeastern hemisphere of Kath has been their home for thousands of years. They thrive on battle. The second type are the Ogre Magi. They have a mystic eye. Those who know Oni lore or demon lore will know that the Oni with the three eyes has magic capabilities. Although there are strong hatreds built for thousands of years due to the cruelty inflicted by Oni, they are not all evil. And this concludes this part of the review. In the next part, we are going to talk about the new character classes, and I'm going to give you my final thoughts on this expansion. I really like these three species. I think that my favorite would be between the Oni and the Naga. So the Kitsune are stealthy, they have that shape-shifting capability, they are very dexterous, they can jump, they can climb, they have that claw attack. The Naga, depending on your variant subspecies, they could be quite stealthy, quite sturdy as well, and deadly with their poisonous bite, of course. I think that both the Kitsune and the Naga could fulfill the same role within a party of adventurers as either infiltrators, spies, or killers. In the case of the Oni, if you are Gailis, you want to be on the front line, and you want to act as a scout as well, a sturdy scout, because you can smell the flesh of your opponents. But if you are an Ogre Magi, you definitely want to be a Battle Mage sort of character, in my opinion. Thank you for watching this part of the review, and thank you for your likes and your comments. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And thank you so much to those of you that are going the extra mile to support the channel. If anyone else wishes to further support the channel, the information on how to do that will be in the description below. Once again, thank you, and see you later.